First things first. Yeah. How are you? I'm amazing. A little overwhelmed, but very excited. Well, we're outside of an arena here, and I, you just told me this was going to be the first uh, this, yeah. show, show of the tour. So This is the first one. This is the first stop. This is the first experience of a stage this size. Yeah. What's going through your mind all day today? Um, uh, it's Father's Day, isn't it? <laughs> So okay. my dad's my dad's here, okay. um, and my dad has been like my number one fan supporter, as majority of fathers would be, and he's turning up today. And even though we're going to be in front of thousands of people, um, today is for my dad. So it's a bit of mosh. <laughs> oh God, it's a bit of mosh. So you're going to look for him in the ground. I'm going to look for him. It's a very you know very emotional day, and I think the boys feel the same. I think mm. it's just trying to keep our emotions under wrap. Um, and we kind of want to, you know, make Pink and her team proud that they picked us and we just want to do it justice. Mm. Um, very excited. Well, before we uh, get into the music um, and, and that you're making now, I kind of want to talk about what got you here. So, uh, so well, you mentioned your dad and him being your biggest fan. So. Yeah. What kind of music was played back home? Was he a big music fan? Oh God, yeah, a uh, huge music fan. We we had Zeppelin, the Beatles, uh, Little Richard, all the way over to Oasis, Ocean Colour Scene, then back to Shirley Bassey and Bjork. It was really <laughs> like that household of um, my dad. I think my dad was just very aware that I love music and that you know I'm young. My mind's a sponge, so <laughs> trying you know me all this music which I'm very lucky to have he didn't play me any shit mm. which is good <laughs> um, and I think my dad says today that I came out of the womb singing apparently which is a wonderful vision to have <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing um, but yeah my dad um, brought me up on incredible music and that's why I subconsciously decided to become a musician well, because that's an interesting thought uh, coming out of the out of the womb singing. Because was it early on that you realized that you, you could sing? Yeah, um, it wasn't me that realized that. Okay. Oh, she might she <laughs> might be a singer one day. Um, it was my dad and my mum. They said um, I was in the back back of the car in the car seat. I was about three years old, and I'm singing along to Catatonia, which is a brilliant mm -hmm. uh, Welsh rock band. Um, and apparently, they just like looked at each other and. Then, Turned around and went, okay, she's a singer, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, I just, I just love it, and it just, some, it's something that came natural as a sort of therapy to me. Mm. And then one day you kind of think to yourself, okay, so I love doing this. People say you're good at it. Maybe it's start time to start believing that you are um, and go for it. But you mentioned kind of uh, that you that you had to get to the thought where. You, you could think of yourself having that confidence of, well, I'm actually quite good. So, yeah. so why did that take a while? I think it's just what we do as humans, don't mm. we? We're not very... We, we tend not to believe in ourselves a lot. Mm. Um, and I think that's something that I also want to promote in my music. Um, you are allowed to say that you're good at something and people somehow mm. don't. Like they, you know, they other people will say it and they'll go, oh, no, 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 no. And sometimes you you are allowed to realise what your strengths are. Um, like, I'm shite at maths. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's just <laughs> something that I'm crap at. Um, I'm good at art. And it's okay to believe in yourself mm. and acknowledge your strength. Mm. So, was it immediately, I, I don't know around with, with what age this was, but was it immediately like, I'm going to be a singer and then that's... Yeah. Pretty much. I'm sold. Yeah, from you know starting primary school, that's what I was going to do. I think I had a brief moment of wanting to be a vet. Okay. Uh, this is only about two weeks long, <laughs> and then I saw a tarantula on this vet program. Nah, practicing it. <laughs> nah, not doing that. Um, yeah, it's just something that. Yeah, when I set my mind on something, it's going to happen. Hmm. There's, no, it's, there's no way around it, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's yeah. a good uh, mentality to Thank have, I you. suppose. Um, and then something else you said that, that I find in interesting. You mentioned that... Um, that's not my mind. <laughs> thought trailer's completely yeah, thought gone cold. Gone. Um, 
think it's just, <laughs> just, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna it's get It's an interesting now. conversation now, you say. Just, just uh, give me one second, because uh, no there worries. was one... Oh yeah, I got it. Yeah. So you mentioned also that it was kind of like a therapy for you. So, so yeah. what role did music play for you as you grew up? Um, it was, and it still is, a friend. Mm. Um, people have diaries. Um, I had music. Um, and it's a way of expressing myself. Um, when I go on stage, I call it my therapy sessions because I, I leave everything in me on the floor. Mm. Um, I come off stage. It's kind of like that. It's so dramatic, but it's so fucking true. It's like shedding your skin when you're on stage and you leave it all and you're ready to start again. And anything that's been hurting me or bothering me um, gets left on stage mm -hmm. and the audience will probably see it in a dead eye yeah do you remember the first time stepping on stage and having that feeling yeah i was 10. okay i was 10 years old and there was a charity cricket do in doncaster where i'm from and i think i sang celine dion my heart will go on i was like, doo -doo -doo. It's like yeah this is my jam <laughs> and i think they were like yeah go on you can get up you can sing I started singing and there was about a thousand people there and they were all like proper buzzing um, and I was like yeah I want to do this again and again and again forever. And then well kind of uh, trying to get at how you got uh, where we are now is yeah. um, well you kind of formed uh, Bang Bang Romeo. Yeah. So, uh, but it was already back in 2010, I believe. Yeah, me and Ross have known each other for a very long time. So, what was it? Uh, it was like? literally acoustic. Like me and Ross met each other. Okay. And um, we just started writing songs under the umbrella of Bam Bam Romeo. We were kind of not taking it seriously, if you like, and we just really en enjoyed each other's songwriting and mm. style. Um, we did that for. Uh, um, few years just writing songs playing acoustically in random bars all that sort of stuff um and then we were like right okay we should probably start taking this seriously so we found richard online the drummer and went from there we decided to take it serious and it quickly snowballed what what changed in that moment well why did you kind of go well we need to i think it's that realization that we're talking about it's okay to acknowledge your strengths mm. um and I, you know, I didn't want to work behind a bar for the rest of my life. Um, and I went, you know what, well, we both said, this is fucking great. We enjoy it. We love this. We're having a great time. The people that we played the music to seem to dig it. Shall we go for this? Shall we fucking do it? Um, and we did. Mm. And then I think one thing uh, people might uh, not realize about music is how much work it takes. Uh, yeah. So what was that maybe initial year of, of when you started taking things seriously? What was that initial year like? <laughs> See, the, okay, so the initial year is the same as every single year as you go on and that's what bands need to know and artists need to know is um, the second you take your foot off the gas pedal, uh, it, it will stop. Hmm. Um, there was no such thing as, you know, nine till five being in a band. It's twenty four seven and me and the boys speak to each other constantly. And the first year of doing this properly is exactly the same as every other year doing it properly. Okay. The venues get bigger, um, you get happier, your music gets you know, you, you you get better as an artist, you learn more. But initially the work is the same, if not more, every okay. year. And yeah, don't take your foot off the pedal, otherwise it will stop. And once uh, it was the three of you, did kind of the music fall into its place uh, quite naturally? Yeah, it's really weird because we, we say how we're a bit telepathic mm. when it comes okay. to writing songs and working together in music. We're so on the same wavelength um, as a band. We rarely have disagreements and when we do have, you know, a musical disagreement, um, we really respect each other's ideas. So it's one of those, ah, he doesn't like it, but there's got to be a reason for that. Mm. And we, yeah, we telepathically have that sort of, we'll be playing in the, in the studio. And I'll be about to say to Ross, Ross, try this and he'll already do it. I'm like, yes, got it, bang on. Um, yeah, we work well. So no egos involved? No, 
Yeah, very good. No, in fact, no, Richard the drummer's got a bit of an ego. <laughs> we call him Bitchard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jordan's looking at me like, I'm going to tell him he said that. Yeah. Um, but with, uh, with the music and then, and then the kind of uh, people start uh, finding it and then yeah. enjoying it, uh, does your kind of mindset shift as the, as kind of with each year as, as things get bigger and um, does your kind of the, the bar you set for yourself, does yeah. that change a little bit? Um, as a band we're super perfectionist. Mm. Um, so the bar every year must be raised, and that's just our mentality of it. Um, we probably give ourselves a hard time um, because we constantly want to do better than the last show. You're only as good as your last gig or your last song, and that's our very strong opinion. And we just we constantly want to set this precedent for ourselves. But at the same time, I think we've come to realise actually really enjoy the moment, live for the moment and that's what we've kind of learnt over the last couple of years especially mm -hmm. um, and you know like today um, we're supporting Pink in Amsterdam at Jan Cruyff in about four hours time and I'm gonna be totally in the moment and right now sat here with you be in the moment enjoy it stop panicking mm. um, yeah just enjoy it more <laughs> and then I want to get into the music a little bit because um well, I'm not sure. Is is there a release date for the for the debut album? Uh, de well, it's coming out in a couple of months. There's not a, there's no, not there's a, no set yeah there's no date, set okay. date, but it's it's this year. Okay, because uh, well, some of the songs we know, some of the songs we yeah. don't know. But the, how should I? How should people kind of see this album? Is this kind of uh, the band up up until now? Um, yeah, I think the same with a lot of bands' music. These are the songs that we've had in our diaries since being, you know, babies sort of thing. <laughs> but then there's also songs that are completely brand new, mm. uh, like just written out in LA and New York. Um, this album is everything that we are as a band. It's tragic, it's fun, it's hard hitting, mm. uh, and it's very emotional. And um, we are on stage, all those things, extremely theatrical, emotional. And um, we don't, you know, guard our emotions. So we've decided mm. not to do that on this album. Uh, it's a Heartbreaker's Guide to the Galaxy, the title, and that's taken from a lyric from a song called Natural Born Astronaut. Um, not just with the songs, um, but visually, we've created a, a concept artistically. Um, the way that we write, we often say, doesn't this song feel like, you know, I'm in this certain place, like I'm in a, I'm in, I'm in a wood mm. and it's foggy and it's freezing cold. I know that's quite weird, but it's how we were inspired by soundtracks that got us to that point. So we thought, why why don't we invent what the song looks like? Mm. So each song on the album has its own planet designed and created by us. Uh, that's very interesting because, um, well, obviously there, there is some, some uh, theatrical element to the, to the, to the music and yeah. there are, are more, I should say, more um, atmospheric element or cinematic element because you are quite um, influenced by movies I believe and totally. movie soundtracks so, so very quickly in between what is one of the or a couple of your favorite movie soundtracks? Oh god Pulp Fiction, Jungle Unchained, mm. anything John Barry, James Bond okay. and uh, Tim Burton, mm. uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. And then with that idea, because like you say, everything has kind of this visual element then, uh, is that how you... Because um, I ask this uh, from artists from time to time, because some have a very visual uh, connection with the music, so I can assume that's the case with you. Yeah, totally. Um, we feel that the visual aspect with music is, is just as important as mm. listening. It really is. I mean, even down to shows, you're there for a show. And I think that's like exactly what Pink embodies. <laughs> you know, her show isn't just her beautiful voice and songs. It's what she's doing. She's putting on a show. Um, you know, this is what Hendrix did. This is what Freddie did. It's mm. James Brown. It's Meatloaf. This is what it is. And we've tried our best to take what we do live and compile it into this mm. teeny tiny little <laughs> CD. But then, like you say, it's also uh, very personal and very. E emotional. So, uh, was it a difficult album to write? Um, no. Again, it's like therapy sessions. Okay. So actually, the writing is probably the easiest thing okay. I do all day. It just comes to me. Um, it comes to Ross as well. It's 
if we didn't write, I think we'd go a bit insane. So it's just, I think it wasn't hard to write, but sometimes it's hard to put it out mm. because it's so personal. Sure. So you go, oh, these are thoughts that I've had on my own and now everyone's going to hear it. It's just, you know, believe in yourself, isn't it? Is Adore Me one of those songs? Yeah, um, I wrote that when I was 16. Okay. About uh, my first ever girlfriend. Mm. Um, and just, it's me at my most vulnerable, just really insecure. Again, not enjoying the moment, not living for the moment, instead being so worried of tomorrow and going, oh, is she always going to want me? Is she always going to be, this is too perfect. Like, are we, is this going to be okay? And not living, enjoying the moment, which effectively ruined the relationship, although it led me to my fiancé now. <laughs> so, you know, you can never, you know, wish your life away and things happen for a reason. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was a lesson and I've, took it with me. Well, that's an interesting word uh, to use lesson because uh, do you learn from kind of delving into your own mind and, and going through these songs and, and kind of figuring out what your mind uh, said is about yeah. certain things? Totally. Um, there's, a, there's a few songs that you know we've written and then we look back at it and kind of mm. go oh that's what that means. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And sometimes sure. it's it's just a lyric that came to us at the point and it sounded great and then you look back at it like a year later and go I understand why I put that now mm. and you do you learn you learn a lot about yourself when you're writing an album can you share one thing that you kind of learned out of I think it's 14 songs if I'm not oh, okay one thing and if it's too personal you can no uh, one thing that I learned is about yourself about myself um, I, I got to get really close and personal with the microphone in terms of my singing voice. Mm. Um, and I got to, you know, open up different doors to my range mm. and me as a vocalist. Um, and because some, when, you, when you're growing up, when you're first starting out, especially if you're someone with like a big voice or whatever, <laughs> um, you get scared and you feel like you've got to belt it out 24-7. But in this album, uh, I allowed myself to be as vulnerable as possible, not just in my lyrics, mm. but in the way I sing. Um, that was definitely a lesson. I think I got that from my dad. My dad told me years and years ago, OK, here's this new song. Do you like it? I go, yeah, I love it. And he'd go, yeah, you should sing it in every style possible. Mm. I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, yeah, sing it sad, sing it angry, sing it happy, and learn what you can do. Um, mm. I did that on this album. I learned a lot about myself. And in terms of that, I suppose with when it's so personal, that's that's kind of uh, to get that get to that emotion, you have to kind of yeah be vulnerable. Yeah, you've got to let these barriers down. Mm. Um, and I think unless you do that, people aren't gonna get your album. Like my favorite albums are the ones that are so honest and true and so raw. Um, yeah, I kind of want to know where that person is in there when I'm listening to an album, and hopefully you guys can hear that in ours because we've done that well to round off kind of then because uh, what is it what is it like then realizing now that when, when you put that album out that people could and, and will have the, a similar effect to to you when you were younger listening to other people's music I think again that's another dream in itself as an mm. artist um, and only and only just recently we've started experiencing that, you know, getting the messages saying this song mm. is so personal to me for this reason, this reason. And people can take their interpretations of our songs and put it to their own life. Like there's certain songs from different artists that mean something else to me completely different, to, you know, sure. entirely like that. Um, and as an artist, that is probably one of the biggest gifts if someone takes your music and relates it to a situation in their life. Tick, you've done your job. Yeah. What, was there one song uh, that, that you were surprised by that people kind of were able to latch on to? Um, on, on the album? Or, or maybe just any song. Uh, you any, oh, okay. Um, I think we've got a song called Chemical hmm. and it wasn't so much a surprise because Ross wrote that when he was like 17 and it's so smart. Um, 
it does make you think like what were you doing at 17 you should be going out drinking and getting laid instead you're writing songs like this you absolute fucking weirdo <laughs> um but he did he wrote it and people have kind of adopted that as the song we played the isle of Wight festival just a few mm. days ago and you know there's four thousand people in that tent singing it from the bottom of their heart and um, so that's a song that's kind of stuck with us as a band and it's become a bit of a fan favorite mm. like. but that must be strange then to, to have lived with that song for quite a while and then yeah. uh, have, have all these people singing it back to you yeah it's, it's an honor man yeah Fair weird enough. thank you <laughs> Well, I wish you the best of luck Cheers. tonight. Thank you with very pink. much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Cheers. Thank you.